Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. Today we're talking about UAVs and their growing use in agriculture and other industries. We're joined by Brian Arnell, our Precision Nutrient Management Specialist and Resident Technology Guy in Extension. And Brian, as you land this, Let's talk about some of the uses of UAVs in agriculture and beyond. Absolutely. UAVs have been a very hot topic, especially in the last year or two. A lot of people out there are building them, utilizing them. And the question really has, how's the fit going to be in agriculture? And, and there are several opportunities in agriculture. One is just going to be the aid of crop scouting. Uh, getting over a large field, taking a picture, looking at it above. It's amazing how many things look different when you get a top side or bird's eye view of it versus at ground level where we're looking at things. And so just scouting fields quicker, identifying problem situations, problem areas, and, and sending an agronomist out to take samples at that point. There's also some a lot of precision ag that's very interested in this technology, uh, developing zones, looking at seed population. How well did the seed emerge? Do we need to do re replanting? Um, just anything that we could use mapping for. Uh, there's many of these drones and UAVs that have centimeter resolution. So that means we have a pixel for every centimeter of soil or plant that's out there. Researchers are extremely excited about the use of these in the research programs. Uh, breeders are able to go over their large blocks, breeding blocks, and take information, take data, whether that's NDVI, visible, temperature, thermal cameras, and such. And, and then outside of ag, there's a lot of opportunities still yet. Uh, fire, um, OSU is really investigating the use of this in, in wildfires. So whether it's at night or in cloud cover or bad conditions, you can have a UAV over a burning fire where maybe pumper trucks or people can't get into to find hot spots or flare ups that they weren't normally see. Talk about your setup that you have today and kind of the range of these products because they can go really high yeah. end it sounds like. Absolutely. So the most popular UAV sold in China today is uh, cost $61 US. A little handheld uh, UAV. There's UAVs that people can use. They buy them, they wear a watch, and they throw them up in the air for a couple hundred dollars and they'll follow you and record. My, my UAV has a camera that I can stream onto my phone or an iPad or smartphone so I can see live, live view on that. It has GPS um, so it can be stable. I can send it up in the air. It can be stable. Uh, and it has a nice little camera so I can take pictures. This is the type of UAV that crop consultants, producers, and crop scouts are going to use if they just want to look at something. Researchers aren't going to be able to utilize this to extent. There's opportunities, but that's about it. Um, this is called a, a copter, so we have propellers. It's a great hovering craft. It can get still images very well. There's also fixed wings that are out there. A fixed wing will either look like an airplane or just have a solid wing base. They're built for covering larger areas. Uh, quicker, they can fly much faster, and that's really built for getting imagery off of a full field. We need to talk about some of the legal guidelines surrounding UAVs. Can anybody just pick one of these up and start using it? So, as a hobby pilot, anybody can can utilize a UAV in hobby scenario, um, but. What most people have to understand is that FAA has a few regulations. Uh, one of the misgivings is that FAA does not care about something as small as this and as low as this is flying. Uh, but if you actually look at the legal terms, FAA has control of all airspace above the soil surface. So that means an inch above the soil surface, they now control the airspace for anything that is within their airspace that is flying independently. So FAA has three classifications of RC planes and UAVs and remote controls. One is hobby. So that is some very specific criteria. They can fly in certain scenarios uh, and they just do it for fun. Third is gov or second is governmental use. That's going to be uh, the police, law enforcement, uh, search and rescue, uh, scenarios like that, and research that is researching the development of new platforms, a platform being the type of plane, how well they fly, the energy use, and, and things like that. The third is a civil group. Civil group is going to be a consultant or a industry who is utilizing the technology to make decisions, to sell services. It's also education and training. So our researchers at OSU that are developing UAVs can do it as long as they don't have a camera on there collecting information. 
So actually, for researchers to use this technology, we have to get permission from the feders uh, uh, and the right exemptions to fly this to collect data. And then uh, another misgiving is that a farmer who owns his property or rents it and wants to buy his own UAV and then fly it over his field is, is legal, and that's not. The second that a UAV is over a field and the images collected are used to make a decision, it is now com considered a commercial activity. Or if you want to go up and take pictures and sell them on the internet, that is also commercial activity. So anybody that uses this over agriculture has to get an exemption, uh, apply with the FAA. They're trying to streamline that process, but you still have that. Even once you get that taken care of, you still have the limitations. You cannot exceed 400 feet. You are going to probably have to have a certified UAV pilot's license. You're going to have to be recertified. So there's a lot of things you should really know before you get into the thought of, I'm going to use this for agriculture right now. Once all that is done mm -hmm. and you've met the requirements, yep. show us the practical okay. application in, say, a field of Absolutely. canola. How does this work and how do you okay. scout this area? Yep. Uh, one thing is, as we talk about leave, one of the limitations we have right now that they're working on is battery life. Mm -hmm. So as we've seen already, this has about 25 minute battery life. So a consultant that would get this in a field of canola is going to lift off and, and basically get a view of the field from an elevation where they normally couldn't see it. And, and we can see the pH plots of Dr. Lofton in the canola from his, uh, a period that you just, you can't see that from the ground, it looks differently. And you can still get over us and see the imp you know, the difference of tillage on the canola stand. You can really get a good view of that and you see how that looks. And so we're right now at 125 feet up. We can get up to about 390 feet before we have, have problems uh, with, with legal issues. And so we can get up over a field and the view with this camera will give us a couple acres. I can see at maximum altitude, I can see about four or five acres at a time. But we can pan out and we can drive, fly over a field. I can have about a half a mile distance, line of sight, as long as there's no trees or buildings in between. I can get out and I can go over a field and, and I can quickly look at it from up high. If I see something that I have questions about, I can fly down and get a closer look, take a picture with my camera. But ultimately, ultimately as an agronomist, I'm going to go out there to that spot. But this helps with canola that's tall and tough to walk through, or sesame, crops that you just can't see. It's tall corn, and it helps you get over those fields quicker. Okay. Brian Arnold, thanks a lot.